Oh, hey. How you doing? It's Henry. And mowers and blowers. Good morning. It's beautiful out today. Almost 50 degrees and sunny. Incredible. I guess there goes my theory of it uh, getting colder and uh, us getting snow in the near future and me, my selling more snow blowers <laughs> moving forward. Uh, well, you never know. Um, actually, some guy uh, texted me about uh, my old Craftsman 522. Five horsepower to come say Snow King, 22 inch wide clearing path. Uh, I've had it for a couple of years and uh, I haven't used it in about two years. It's been sitting in my shed. And uh, well, I have it only listed for 150 bucks, but if I can get rid of it, I'd be more than happy. So right now I'm gonna whip it out of here, and see if it fires up. <laughs> So I just whipped it out. It wasn't too difficult. Uh, I'm actually clearing my shed quite a bit um, with the recent sales of a few snow blowers. It's on choke, throttle is high. There was no gas in here, I put gas in here. Oil is very good in here as if I did an oil change before, which I don't remember. Primer feels like it works. I'm gonna give it a pull. You guys think it'll start? Two years sitting in that shed. Take it to the middle on the choke. Okay, um, there was a small noise that I heard. Did you guys hear it? I uh, don't know what that sound was. It could have been, it could have been the belt, you know? As it's slowing down, it stops. It slows it down and that thing is stuck. But I think it, uh, you know, works okay. roll this to the front garage so we can get a better look at that noise. So I've got it rolled out into the front of my garage where I can check out what the story is with that noise. When I disengage the auger spinning while it's about to stop it makes that noise as you guys heard. I'm suspecting that it's the belt that's too loose on the uh, tensioner arm so that once you release it it wants to stop it right and the and the belt like hits the cover or something. That's what it sounds like, you know? Also, I've got a plastic bag wrapped around the uh, auger shaft that I need to extract. Uh, I did notice as it was running a little bit, it started to surge a little bit, you know what I mean? Uh, but I believe this is, no, it's not. I thought it was a Tecumseh carburetor with the long fuel mixture screw on the very bottom of the bowl. And that way you could actually adjust the uh, um, fuel mixture so that would have fixed any kind of surging you know but it was a clean tank and I believe I winterized it before I put it into the shed and it started right up you know and it ran very well for a while 
until, you know, a little bit of surging. Uh, but I haven't run it long enough to really know exactly what the story is. Maybe some kind of debris or something just fell in there and now it's blocking, blocking the jets a little bit, you know? So I want to figure that out. But first, I got a text from my friend Nick Irardi over in West Iceland. And uh, he has a blown Kohler Courage 21 horsepower engine with a hole in the block for me. Uh, as you know, I re recently rebuilt the Kohler Courage uh, engine. 19, 20, 21 horsepower, somewhere around there. But I always thought that the two twin camshafts that I put in there was a little hinky because it didn't come with a, a ACR, a compression release lever on it. So I have a feeling that when I'm ready to put that rebuilt engine onto something, it's not gonna start because it doesn't have the compression release. So in case that happens, I could use Nick's engine's cams or compression releases if he has them too, you know? So I'm gonna go over to West Ice Loop right now and pick it up. I was, uh, as I was leaving for uh, Nick's house, uh, Quinn the mailman stopped me and he says, hey, did you get my note yesterday? And the note had said that there was a push mower right around this area here, uh, three or four blocks away from my house. And he says, bro, I don't know how long that note was sitting there. You know, it could have been a day or something. And uh, it was, it was like two days. And I says, stuff like that that's on the curb, man, there's no way it'll be here by the time I get to it, you know? So I didn't know when it was, so I never went to check. Today he said that it's been there even yesterday. So unfortunately, today's garbage day. As you can see, garbage cans are upside down, which means that the garbage guys have already come for it, you know? So uh, I knew it wasn't gonna be here anymore, but I figured since I was on my way out to Nick's house, I might as well at least drive by and check. Sure enough, it is not there. So, you know, you win some, you lose some, but uh, curb alerts like that, if you're not right on top of it, and the minute you get the notification that there's something on the curb, People are like scavengers, man. It'll be gone in two seconds, as this was, you know. Well, at least it lasted for a couple of days, but I should have went to check anyway. But uh, anyway, off to uh, Nick Iorardi's house. Okay, I'm here over at Nick's house. What's up, Nick? going on with you today bro nothing much got your snowblowers ready now huh uh, customers oh customers oh yeah hey nick you want to shout out your business now to everybody yeah, sure so go ahead come down a little loose small engine repair phone Do number all your small engine repairs <laughs> small uh, phone number 631-972-4692 These are all customer stuff? This one I'm flipping. Nice LT. Cool. Here's your time cutter. How much did you pay for the time cutter? That battery is dusty. How much did you pay for this time cutter? Oh, 300 bucks. 300 bucks for a time cutter. How about that? The engine stopped, so it worked. So this is the time cutter that the uh, 21 Kohler Courage came off of? I told Nick, I said, I don't know if these things ever came with courages on it. Maybe it did, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, he got it for $300 because the engine was blown and he had a spare um, V-twin on there and uh, he got Nick from Belfort to uh, wire it up and now it's back here again. And uh, he says, hey, you wanna see it start up? I said, sure. Because honestly, I love the zero turns and I love Toro, but I know the time cutter is the uh, residential version that you buy from like Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. But either way, 300 bucks, still a good deal. You know what I'm saying? Hydros work perfectly too. Really? Yeah. They're all gonna whine no matter what, you know what I'm saying? But as long as it doesn't whine too much, you know? Maybe it's got no gas. Uh, I just filled it up with the thing. Yeah. So Nick has got too much stuff to do, so uh, he doesn't want this. He said, do we want it? I says, I want it only if you don't want it. <laughs> it's got like water in the gas tank, uh, but started up with some starting fluid, another Bolins. I think the last time you, you gave me a Bolins last yeah, time with I a did, busted yeah. motor. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, engine. 
So this is the engine that Nick's giving me. Uh, show me the hole. Uh, looks like right here. Oh, okay, so it's minor. It's like a, a crack, you I know? I think there's something underneath still. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh. Does it have Earl in it? Uh, I think it all leaked out. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, so it won't leak out all over my, empty. All over my van. Uh, so it's got a, a crack over there and it's got a hole on the bottom. So it's probably blown connecting rods. Remember, the only reason why I want this is probably for the twin cams in it and the compression release, possibly. Also, the uh, air filter box, air filter base, the cover, um, that stuff is kind of worth it. And there's this plastic spacer that goes between the carburetor and the uh, block. That's kind of useful because I know mine's cracked, you know. Otherwise, I wouldn't have taken the, the Kohler Courage because, uh, you know, they're, they're crap engines, you know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, uh, Nick is now a Stens dealer, and um, he gave me a Stens hat, and uh, I gave him a Lucas shirt. <clears throat> so you know what? Uh, he's a Stens dealer. I'm a Lucas sponsored uh, guy. Just swap some swag. You know what I mean? Look at these three uh, jet skis that uh, Nick is working on. Apparently, this is his specialty. This one right here. In this one i have a lot of money and parts in this one this is a yamaha right yeah, you want to see it start up uh i know nothing about this stuff really i'm remember i can't swim so yeah. anything close to being near water i don't know anything about you know but uh yeah sure now do they call these jet skis or wave runners um well this is a yamaha so it's called a wave runner oh yeah i thought the wave runner was like one of those things where there, there's a long thing that you hold on to i mean that's a stand-up jet ski. Oh, a stand-up jet ski. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't even know the difference. So this is going to be really loud because the exhaust is really hooked up right now. The louder the better, bro! Oh, yeah. Hmm. You know, I've seen jet skis on Craigslist for free. They're cart the crap. Yeah? I'm not joking. Well, I'm, I'm getting rid of that hole for free. It's not worth a dime. No one wants them. You mean this one? Yep. You're getting rid of that one? Well, I'm taking the engine out and do a couple of take parting it out, but then I'm gonna toss it to the curb and bring it to the junkyard. You mean to tell me that the the um the body itself is not worth anything? No. Really? It's not worth a dime. But it looks like it's in really good shape, though. No one wants them. No kidding. What's it made out of? Fiberglass? Fiberglass. Yeah. The whole thing? Huh. Bombardier, they make airplanes and uh, quads and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Really? That, you're going to throw that to the curb? Well, not going to take it to the curb, so I'm going to probably bring it to the junkyard, yeah. Good lord. What a waste, huh? Yeah, it's a shame, but what are you going to do? I'm not going to keep it here as an eyesore. How about snowmobiles? I would love a snowmobile. Uh, it's almost the same exact engine, at least. Yeah. That's what I figured, yeah. right? Hmm, that's interesting. Well, maybe one day if I find a snow uh, mobile somewhere, right, for free, and I can't figure out the engine, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure I can't, <laughs> I'll bring it to you to fix. Sounds good enough. And see, now this, this is this is where I'm out of my element. This right here, this is a uh, 760, a 760 engine. That one's an 1100. This one will go probably 65 on a flat day on the water. This will probably go like 55, 50. Now is that is that knots or uh yeah? yeah 60 this one right here yeah I would be really afraid to be on the water going 60 with this thing I mean what it's if you are like a gallon probably uh, every 15 every 15 minutes you're probably burning a gallon of gas to this thing now Really? Yeah this thing sucks down gas. Well, what if you hit like a turtle or something won't you go flying? <laughs> so I was over here talking to Nick about these snow blowers and we're talking about the engine, about how I have that snowblower frame that I just need an engine on it. Believe it or not, I was kind of thinking about it. Just kind of thinking. You guys all know I don't spend any money. I don't want to spend any money. But I was kind of thinking about going to Harbor Freight and buying that 212cc, 6.5 horsepower Predator engine for $99. And then putting that on my frame, my Craftsman frame, and then I'd have a snowblower. So being that snowblowers now, you can't get more than $175, $200 for them right now anyway. So would I spend $100 to make $75 profit? 
I just don't think that that's worth it. You know what I mean? So we were just talking, and then Nick says, I've got a couple of engines. I said, horizontal shaft snowblower engines? He's like, yeah, I think I have like five. I'm like, really? Let's go see. This is his other side of his backyard. He's got a fishing boat there. Trailer with a ramp. Another homemade trailer. Ooh. Oh, dude, you don't have to whip them out, man. I'll just take a look at it. I think at first, like, a five, five. This is definitely a five. Yeah. <clears throat> or it might be a 3.5 edger one, too. This looks just it like the one. Oh, it did? Yeah. It's probably a five then, but that looks pretty small though. I'm thinking it's 3.5 because it looks like the same size as the, uh... okay, so I can't use this for sure. Because I have like three of those. Because this is a double, you see over here? Mm -hmm. This is a, a double thing, right? Uh -huh. A double pulley one. So this is the crankshaft and that one's the camshaft. So this one usually drives the drive okay. pulley on the snowblower. And this one drives the auger pulley, uh, auger belts. So I definitely can't use this. I need one that just sticks out one, you know, well, that doesn't have that. Kind of have. Oh really? This is Nick's. Uh, this is Nick's version of uh, parts shed. It's cool. It's much bigger. Put a lot of stuff in here. You do have a lot of stuff in here. Good stuff. Hey, that's a nice. Uh, that's an MTD yellow seat. This came off a um, yard machine. Yeah, an MTB. Uh, that's the same uh, yeah. seat on my Rodimus Prime. That um, backpack blower works? Uh, I need a carburetor. So uh, it's been there for probably a year. Is that a Ryobi? Ryobi. Yeah. Sometimes not worth fixing, huh? Mm -hmm. So I'm at my mom's house now. I want to try and uh, clean up the uh, yard a little bit more. Also those leaves in between bushes and stuff that I want to blow out. You know, do a final cleanup, you know? Also, I need to take a look at some of these shingles that have fallen off during our uh, high wind recently. So I gotta fix that before I can go home and work on anything else. So I just spent about an hour fixing my um, mom's roof. I think I did a pretty good job, you can't even tell now. Uh, but when I was up there, I noticed that the side gutters were clogged completely with uh, decomposed leaves and branches and stuff from like probably five years worth. So what can I do? I can't leave it like that. Got a ladder and all that stuff came out of it. I mean, it's a lot, you know, heavy stuff. Uh, I thought initially that it was dirt, but it, how could dirt get up there, you know? So what it is, it's just years and years of decomposed um, leaves that looks like dirt. So I'm gonna have to fire up my Vandermullen backpack blower. That stuff always works. This is my Vander Mullen windmill 540 BT. Always starts up on the first pull. Let's test it. I think that's choke. No? Open. So let's see.
I'm home now from my mom's house. I've been working all day. I'm so sore all over the place. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? I wanted to show you, this is the uh, Kohler engine on the bottom. It's cracked right there. And I suspect that's where the post is, where the camshaft goes in or, wait a minute, uh, camshaft? No, the camshafts are on the top on this one. So uh, that's either holding the synchro balancer, I think, or yeah, it's probably the synchro balancer. So this engine block is done, Ski. Anyway, I'm gonna try to weasel that onto this and then get that Bolin's uh, lawnmower out of here. been a long day for me uh, I was gonna try to get this started obviously I didn't have time to get this uh, thing worked out and uh, sell it to the guy the guy couldn't come today anyway so uh, we'll continue uh, working this out in the morning well not quite yet I just went inside and I saw my phone and I actually sold my snapper engine mounting plate that one I was gonna throw away but I kept anyway listed it and I sold this for $18.88 plus $8.88 shipping. So $25 for this metal plate. And then I had also listed this uh, recoil starter magneto. Um, some other stuff. Flywheel from this machine. You know, this crazy Echo PB2100 uh, leaf blower that I had just uh, worked on for the past two episodes that I... Figured out there was no compression to it, so um, I decided that I was going to sell it locally. So I listed it locally for a few days, and nobody wanted it, not even for $15, not even a bite. So I figured, you know what, let me list the parts on it that are worth any money, and uh, I guarantee you I'll make more than $15, you know what I mean? So the um, recoil starter that I spent all day fixing, right, I actually sold it for uh, $13.00 and plus like $8 shipping or something. So like 20 bucks, you know, I'll, uh, it'll probably cost me about $5 to ship it. So uh, I'll net like uh, $15 off of it. Exactly what I was gonna get for the whole thing if I sold it locally, you know what I mean? But anyway, I'm beat man, but I wanted to at least come out here and take the recoil starter off and package it up and, and as well as the plate and send it off in tomorrow's mail so that Quinn the Mailman can come and pick it up. So uh, then we'll continue this video in the morning. So it's the next day, yesterday after I turned off the camera, Andy the Brit walks over in the, uh, in the uh, evening and he says, Hey Henry, I've got something to tell you. And I says, yeah, what is it? You know they're saying we're going to get six inches to a foot of snow next Wednesday. I'm like, Get out of here! What are you, crazy? Not to mention the fact that you just said next Wednesday. How are you gonna predict the amount of snow you're gonna get almost a week out, you know? He's like, I don't know, but that's what they're saying. I said, who's they? He goes, well, Darren, across the street. I'm like, is Darren a meteorologist? He goes, I don't know, mate. Just checking out my phone and it says, snow, 80%, Wednesday into Thursday. And I'm like, yeah, get out of here. I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, look, man, uh, even today, it's like 55. Yesterday, I was in short sleeves over at my mom's house. I was working, but, you know, it's warm, you know, seasonally warm. Oh, listen, I wanted to ask you guys something. So I have a fireplace, and this year I'm trying to burn off as much of that damn wood in my shed as possible, so I'm... On cold nights, I I light up the fireplace for three, four hours, so I'm, I have a lot of ashes. I remember my putting some ashes down on my lawn in lieu of lime, because it does basically the same thing as what I read. Like, ashes have a lot of potassium and uh, phosphorus in it. 
And I think my lawn has too much nitrogen because of that damn fertilizer I put down this uh, summer. Uh, anyway, when should I put the lime down? Or when should I put the ashes down? You know, ashes in lieu of lime. So when do people usually put lime down? Is it like uh, the start of spring? Or can I put it down anytime? But first, today I'm going to uh, get something out of my shed because overnight I sold something else on eBay. So I'm in my parts shed now. As you can see, I've got I've got like five years worth of wood stacked up in here, taking about a uh, quarter of my shed. Gonna have to just use some. Anyhow, uh, last night I sold my lawn boy. The Lawn Boy uh, push mower that I uh, took apart. Um, I don't know why I did that actually. Oh, it was really rusted. So it has a uh, good rear propelled wheels. Good tread on the front wheels too. You know, the uh, stud, stud sh uh, shafts that attach the wheels on there. The uh, cover. Uh, all this I listed. Uh, $18.88 for the whole thing. Plus eighteen eighty eight in shipping, so roughly thirty six, thirty eight dollars plus tax. I'm getting like forty bucks for it, right? I'll throw this in a medium size flat rate box, which is about thirteen eighty five. So uh, that'll be that. Uh, so I'll make a good um, twenty five dollars, thirty dollars out of this. It's pretty good. Like I said, it's it's junk. You know what I mean to me. Uh, and you can sell it for good money. Like I said, I'm always trying to encourage people to sell on eBay. Because if you have so much, um, so many parts like I do, and you want to get rid of it, why not make money off of it, right? So we're going to continue working on this thing today. Uh, as you guys know, I pulled it out of my uh, shed, and uh, it started on the first pull, uh, or took a couple pulls, I, f I forget. And it uh, ran fine for about a minute, and then it started sounding like it was surging which means that the carburetor may have some kind of debris in there. Um, so I could try to do a quick and dirty. In addition, this tire here is okay. But this tire here is, hmm, I could have sworn this would, one of them was down, you know? Now well, this one could use some air, you know? Uh, also, I have this like plastic bag stuck in the uh, auger shaft. That I really should take care of. Um, so I had that one guy who wanted to buy it for 150 bucks, but now that we're getting snow, and he hasn't responded, maybe I should raise it to 250, huh? In addition, we have this uh, Bolin's push mower. Uh, it has this old Pulsajet style. Um, carburetor gas tank combination right um, this is your run-of-the-mill basic push mower you can get these usually at Walmart or something for 150 bucks or so Anyhow, I was gonna try to clean the carburetor eventually you know so it has a blade and everything it's probably just a dirty carburetor but uh, actually I'm not gonna touch it I'll tell you why because one of my subscribers Victor Gaines, he uh, commented on one of my videos and he said that he had a 42-inch uh, Craftsman uh, lawn tractor mower deck. As you guys know, I need three of those mower decks. So he lives up in uh, upstate New York, uh, LaGrangeville, and he tells me that it's only two hours away from me. And I'm like, dude, I live in Huntington, Long Island. LaGrangeville is a good half hour to an hour north of Newburgh. It once took me three and a half hours to get to Newburgh, so it's gonna take you minimum four hours, you know? He's like, nah, I'll get there in two hours. Okay. Anyway, so he wanted a trade, right? And uh, I says, well, I have this if you want it. Uh, and he says that he doesn't want me to mess with it. He wants something broken that he can fix. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let's do it. Uh, whenever you want, he's going to bring me a deck. I'm going to give him this in return and whatever whatever he wants in a bag. I've got so much stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, thank you, uh, Victor, for the uh, trade um, 
inquiry. Uh, let's get her done. I'm gonna put this thing like that so I can have a better view of this. Look at that. The uh, auger housing looks relatively clean given this thing is like 20 something years old, you know what I mean? Um, it's straight. Shoes have not been worn out and the bottom scraper bar is okay. Like I said, 150 bucks. This is a steal right at this time of year, you know what I mean? But uh, carburetor work and this is what we're gonna get to today. So as you saw, I got that plastic bag out of that auger shaft. Turns out it was like two plastic bags. Really spun up in there and hard to get out. I mean, I can't believe I spent so much time working on that, you know, but got it out, pain in the butt. My next issue was when we were running this thing, right? Auger and drive run fine, but when you release the uh, auger engagement, right? It feels like something slapping against plastic, you know? So I was thinking the belt might be too uh, loose when you disengage it and it uh, hits onto this plastic. I'm gonna start her up right now to see if we hear that noise without this cover on. If the noise is not there with this cover on, it means that that's what it is. It's that the belt, when it's disengaged, it becomes too loose, slaps against the plastic. So let's see if it'll start up, eh?
bridges anymore. So whatever was clogging or, you know, causing it to surge in the beginning is now gone. Whatever blew off, burned off, whatever. So that's great. Maybe there was, uh, I don't know, some moisture in there or something. But it seems like the noise it's making when you disengage the auger is this black bar here that's connected to the uh, brake. Let me show you. This black bar that's connected to the uh, auger pulley brake, right? It's supposed to go down and stop the brake, uh, stop the pulley from moving when you disengage so that the auger doesn't spin anymore. And basically the vibration taps this metal thing here and makes that noise, right? When I use some channel locks to hold this black bar when I disengaged it, it wouldn't touch this at all, right? And it wouldn't make that noise. Um, I'm thinking because over time it hasn't been used so long, that the groove uh, between the two lips of the pulley is so rusty, right? That there's n hardly any kind of um, smooth transition from the brake touching the pulley. So it just like jumps da -da 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 -da, like that. I mean, I know this is crazy, but I'm even thinking about shooting some lubricant right where the brake is so that it won't jump. But that's kind of silly because it'll, the belt will slip, you know? But the noise is really coming from this part here when this thing touches here. So, I don't know, I'm gonna have to think about this for a minute. So when you engage the auger, tightens the belt, turns the pulley. When you disengage it, it makes that squeaky sound right there. And it allows the, that bar to lower its brake onto the pulley to stop the auger from moving. And it makes a squeaky sound. I'm gonna use some Toolbox Buddy from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Spray a little bit of lube here. I don't think this will do anything in terms of the vibration though. But I'm thinking that it might be the tension of the spring. The tension of the spring is, is stronger because over time the tension of this spring here loosens therefore allows it to bump down. Ooh, look at Spidey. Okay, so look, now it doesn't squeak anymore, which is what uh, the lubrication is intended to fix, right? While I'm here, I'm gonna lube uh, the moving joints, the moving parts, and careful not to get any on the pulley itself. It doesn't vibrate anymore, but I'm thinking that the tension of the spring. Let's try it. So it's still making that noise and I don't know how to get rid of the noise other than uh, removing this bar so that there is no break. What do you think of that? <laughs> because uh, let's let's test it and see 
if I just, let's say I remove this bar. I'll just like hold it up like that, right? We'll see if the auger stops in a decent time. You need it because if you didn't have the brake on the pulley, the momentum of this pulley that's spinning the belt will allow the auger to continue to move. So how do I stop this from vibrating when it stops? This part here looks adjustable, but I don't see how that, you know, does that. You know, I don't see how, what that would, would do, you know? So I think I know what's causing the vibration. Look really carefully at that pulley over there. See that there's a rusted spot right there? It's like a chunk of metal sticking up. Well, when it slows down, the brake is going to hit that, right? And bump. Bump, 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 bump on the brake. So I think it's that rusted spot right there. I don't know if you guys can see it here. Let me, let me point it with my uh, screwdriver here. Right here. This part right there looks like it's just a rust buildup spot and it's a bump. So if the brake is going to hit the bump, right, it'll bounce this up and down. So I think that's what it is. I got to try to get this rusted bump off this uh, groove of the pulley. There you go that was it that was it so you know what it was it was that uh that one area where they had uh two rusty spots on each side of the pulley right and as you're disengaging the auger lever uh the brake goes down and stops the pulley from moving as it's stopping the pulley the brake pad is bumping on the two rusty spots so instead of me trying to grind it down that you saw i was doing with the screwdriver over in time lapse I figured let me start it up and very carefully take a uh, chisel and put it in between there and as the auger is being uh, spun by the engine at high revolutions, right, you take the, the thing and you just put it there as if you're just grinding the rust right off, you know, so it smooths out the entire um, pulley from the rust. So as you saw, that worked perfect, you know what I mean? So that's great. And also, I don't think I'm going to do a carb clean because honestly it runs just fine now. After you run it for a while, you know what I'm saying? Uh, whatever clears up, clears up. It's been sitting in storage for such a long time that uh, 
whatever it was just cleared itself out. It doesn't surge anymore, you know? Runs very well. Starts up with the first pull and everything. So I'm pretty stoked, you know? We got rid of that plastic thingamajig that was caught in the auger. We fixed that noise in the, uh, underneath the, uh, where the belts and the pulleys are and the, uh, carburetor surging just uh, worked itself out, you know? So, uh, this snowblower is ready to go. Uh, I guess if the guy still wanted it for 150, I will honor that price and give it to him. But I think I might list it again for 250 now, being that the snow is coming. Hey, it's all supply and demand, you know what I mean? And uh, you can keep your word on the guy that was interested, right? But then when you when he doesn't want it anymore, you relist it for a higher price. You know, and then you can negotiate it down. Maybe I'll get 200 for it after the 250. You know what I'm saying? But uh, either way, it's better than 150, right? Anyway, that's uh, my video for today. Uh, it was a long video. It took two days, you know. But uh, got another snowblower out of my shed and ready for sale. Looks like I might have to do more uh, moving forward. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. next time on mowers and blowers hey if you guys enjoyed the video remember to give me a like also comment below subscribe remember it doesn't cost anything to subscribe it's free right also hit that little bell that way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.